Hey everyone! Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I actually wanted to talk about job offer negotiations this time around because it's been coming up quite often in the Twitter tech community and also within my own spaces. So I just wanted to build this YouTube video today to talk to talk about the job offer negotiation process and give you a couple of tips for what you can do before and after you get the job offer details. So this video assumes that you've done quite a bit of work within the interview process. You've gone through all of the interview procedures and the, the rounds, and now you're just waiting for a response back. And that's per completely okay. Give it a few days. Regardless, you will get a phone call or a email um, asking for a phone call to be set up to talk to the recruiter about the next steps and you know potentially any new news. When you get that verbal offer or that verbal confirmation that you've passed the rounds and that you had very good and positive feedback from the interview team, all you really want to do in that call is listen to the offer details and make sure you get them written down. Honestly, this call is just to express how excited you are and how you felt about the interview process. So I typically keep it very short. I say thank you and then I try to set some time to think about the um, actual job offer. So if I were to get called by an by a recruiter, they would most likely say something like, Hello Tiffany, I'm so excited to actually let you know that everybody on the team uh, loved really meeting with you and we all deliberated and decided that we wanted to extend a verbal offer to you now. So this offer includes a package of base salary, st some stock options, maybe a bonus and all this other stuff. So you get these idea you get these, um, you get these numbers and you write them down. A standard conversation with the recruiter will include some information about your base salary, your options if you have any and a sign-on bonus. So those are the three things, three core uh, components of a job offer. Of course there are company benefits, all these other things, but those are the details that are typically written down and sent to you in a package, right? Um, typically you can ask some of, you can you can ask some of those questions. I usually like to keep my conversations with the recruiter very short. I just sound um, I just I, I sound out a thank you. I ask them um, if I could have some more time to think about and look over the details. And then I end the call um, with a you know kind of call to action of like, can I follow up with you in a week or so? And a week is pretty standard. It gives you some time to look over the details. If you're finishing up on any other interviews, you can finish those up. You can follow up with other companies, see if you um, want to just, you're basically closing out, right? Um, and ideally, you have a good sense of whether or not you uh, enjoy the company, you want to accept this job offer or not. The best sort of outcome or situation following a recruiter conversation like that where you've been extended an offer is that you got offer details that surpass your expectations for the amount that you had initially expected. And that's really great because now that gives you the opportunity to have this or something better. And that's the goal of negotiating at the end of the day. You want to, every job Every job opening has a salary range, a price range, a standard package and a range. And the goal of negotiating is to get as close as possible to that upper range uh, so that you get the best possible offer. Okay, so that's the idea behind negotiations. When you actually get the offer in an email or you've gotten the details now, you wanna then give it some time, give it a day or two, and then formally begin the negotiation process. You want to trigger that and you want to initiate or trigger that negotiation process. I typically like to trigger it with an email to a recruiter. Sometimes I'll keep it short and I'll ask like, hey, can we hop on the call to talk about some details? That's if I'm feeling really comfortable and I know what I'm going to say. I usually recommend most people who are negotiating for the first time to initiate the conversation over email and list out like uh, and I'll give you a framework for this, but you typically just want to list out some of the skills that you uh, and strengths that you have that would most that are going to be that contribute heavily and align heavily with the team's missions and interests. Um, and that's opening the door for you to also like have a call to action to negotiate the process or to ask for a formal negotiation process. And the nice thing about 
initiating a conversation over email is if a recruiter for whatever reason or someone wants to follow up on the details you can just read off of the email that you had written and not feel like you're struggling or stumbling over your words so in the email itself i typically think the recruiter and the interview team uh, some some expression of gratitude and appreciation and excitement for the role because i want them to know that i'm actually really interested and this is why i'm negotiating this job offer there's a alternate reality where i could potentially take this job offer right so i will typically think uh the recruiter for their time and then the, also the opportunity to be joining the team or the company as a whatever the role is and i prep the conversation by saying you know that this is uh in, it, like this is actually really exciting time for me or i will say like i've been uh, I'll align it back to my passions or my hobbies. Like I'll say, like if it's a dev advocate role, I'll say I've been doing a lot of talks in the community. I've been building, um, building up my, uh, building up my own relationships with people in the community, and I'm really excited to bring this and all of my skills to the table because I know it's going to advance this this team's mission and vision to build out a developer community whatever it is you know you say the same thing as an engineer you can say i've been developing for a long time now different systems and i'm actually really excited to be working in this team especially on this type of project or this type of tech stack all of these things can be really exciting and show that you have some depth and expertise to yourself so let's begin listing out those those skills or those um um, strengths that you have and connect them back to the team's mission and vision. And, and then after that, that's actually when you want to introduce a formal initiation or call to action for a negotiation. So you can say something like, based off of some of my market research or some of my other job offers, and I'm having a hard time making a decision, um, you know, you can ask, like, I'm looking for X amount left in your base sal in this in the base salary and I'm you know you can kind of you can do that or you can say something like I've had friends mention higher salaries to me and I was hoping for XYZ to XYZ amount not XYZ to XYZ amount but XYZ to W T <laughs> amount of money um, but you typically want to either talk in percentages or numbers and be pretty specific at this point because you only really get a chance to negotiate once uh, sometimes twice on that base salary uh, before it becomes a strain on the team and they actually decide to move on with another candidate I've seen a lot of job offers move uh, towards another candidate after a candidate has decided to negotiate uh, negotiate multiple times for a base salary. Try to get chew your shot towards the target and be as to the point as possible in this process. You can talk percentages if you're not comfortable, but again, I always recommend that people map out um their base their current base salary their current uh stock option situation and their sign on bonuses if they had a sign on bonus in their previous roles because you can essentially compare those numbers to what you're being offered and see how far off you want to be or if you're again like best of both worlds is if you already have this offer and it's a lot higher okay now we can we can figure out some numbers here. <clears throat> After you've asked for the amount or negotiated for the amount, then you want to thank them again for their time, uh, the recruiter for their time again, and then you will offer a phone call or what uh, to answer any other questions that they may uh, want to ask that can help them with this conversation or coming to a um, you know coming to an understanding or coming to a, a beneficial agreement on on the amount, whatever it is, and then you sign your name and then you send it out. If you're having a hard time deciding how much you're gonna ask for, you know maybe you get a job offer and it's ridiculously beyond your um, your expectations. Uh, typically, like what I've seen a lot of people successfully be able to negotiate is something around the 10k range. So those are good numbers to put out there if you are just wanting to practice negotiating because it's really 
not that big of a deal and it typically doesn't break the rules of uh, any of the HR or finance rules of like being in a particular level or being in a particular role and being locked into a certain amount or certain range of salary. Either way, most job offers like to target uh, initial offers around the lower or mid range of a particular level anyway. So something like 10K is going to either bring you closer to the middle midpoint or average salary of that role or it's going to push you at the upper range which is actually a really great introduction into your next role or good reason to be promoted for your next role once you join the company and you've been delivering work on a consistent basis and it's time for those performance reviews. If you have a good recruiter, they will go to bat immediately for you to update the hiring manager and then you'll hear back within a few days and they'll update you either on email or they'll give you a phone call at which point this is when you can verbally say, hey, this works for me or no, this doesn't. And if you do decide to say yes and accept the job offer verbally, you'll get the new paperwork and then congratulations, you have a job offer that you're happy with. And so <laughs> I know that this video is a little bit longer than I intended, but I hope that this video helps you. I know a lot of folks are putting themselves out there, are getting out of their comfort zones to negotiate job offers for the first time. I hope that this video gives you some good tips. If you have any specific questions, you can ask them in the comments and I'll answer them or other people in the comments can share their experiences as well. Let's just help each other and share some more information about this because I think it's also really important for people's careers. And honestly, you know, the best, the best news for both the interviewer and the interviewee um, and the, the team that you're interviewing for, to be honest, is that you come in and that you're excited for the role and that you're, you're not thinking about money as you joined and, and that you had missed out on something. So, um, yeah, I hope that this is helpful. I'll see you all in the next YouTube video. Bye.